All right, so what we're going to talk about today is macromolecules. And I know that may seem like a really big word, but it's pretty easy to understand. The prefix macro means large, and a molecule refers to lots of different elements all kind of crazy glued together. So we're going to start our lesson with organic chemistry. And organic chemistry is one branch of science that studies all compounds that contain bonds between carbon atoms. Now, when you link carbon atoms, those chains can get extremely long. And it's just kind of like carbon attached to carbon attached to carbon attached to carbon. And depending on how many carbon atoms are linked, you get lots of different properties. And then those compounds can do lots of different things, kind of like all of the different parts of your body. All made up of carbon, but they can all do different things. So whenever you have carbon, carbon, in addition to bonding with itself, can bond to lots of other elements, including things like hydrogen and oxygen and phosphorus, sulfur and nitrogen. Those are just a few. But these bonds are all very strong, and that's what they maintain and have in common. They, once the bonds are formed, they don't break very easily. So um, as carbon bonds, they form these long chains, and we call them carbon chains. These bonds can have single bonds, double bonds, or triple bonds. The bonds are really versatile, and so are the chains. When you have a single bond, it's a strong bond, but it's a little on the weak side. A double bond means it's double the strength, and a triple bond means nothing's going to break it. I kind of like to think of it as um, when you were little and you would play Red Rover. If somebody was coming over that was weak, you and your friend next to you would hold hands and know that that person wasn't going to break through. But if the guy that's going to be the next linebacker for the Chicago Bears comes through, you're going to stand a little bit closer so that that link between your two arms is stronger and then that person can't break through. And that's kind of what a triple bond is like. So macromolecules uh, in Greek means giant molecule. And macromolecules are made up of thousands or hundreds of thousands of smaller molecules. Formed through polymerization, these monomers, which are the single units, are bonded together to form very large polymers. You can think of it like pearls making a pearl necklace. So each individual pearl is a monomer, and when you link them together, the pearl necklace becomes the polymer. So just in review, monomers are small single units, where polymers are a bunch of monomers put together to form a very large molecule. Polymerization is the process that bonds these monomers together or tears them apart. And there's two types of processes in polymerization. Dehydration synthesis is when you're actually building a polymer. The way you build a polymer is you have to remove a water molecule for every bond that you make. So if you have four monomers bonding together, you're going to make three water molecules, one for every bond. Hydrolysis is the reverse of that process. So if I want to tear a polymer apart so I have the monomers back, I need to put the water back in. So every time I break a bond in a polymer, I need to tear a water molecule apart and put it back in so that I have the individual monomers. Okay, so in review, what we're looking at here on this slide is dehydration synthesis. And um, another way that you can remember it is synthesis means to make, and then dehydration means to remove water. So think of it almost as making something by removing water. So if you look, you have two monosaccharides, and these represent your monomers, and you're taking out one water molecule and different parts from each one. So you're taking a hydrogen from this monomer and an OH, which is known as a hydroxide, from this monomer. And when you remove both of them, it forms H2O, and you get what's called a disaccharide. 
which is the beginning parts of your polymer. Okay, so remember with every uh, water molecule that's removed, or every bond that's formed, you get one water molecule. So if we count here, we have one, two, three bonds that have been formed. That means that we'll have three mo water molecules that have been pulled out. Okay, the reverse of this is called hydrolysis. Okay, lysis, or anytime you're lysing anything, that means you're breaking. And if you look at the, the first part of that word, hydro means water. So to break with water. Um, here, what you do is you have that same water molecule, you can almost think of it as, coming down and breaking apart this bond that exists between these two monomers. Okay, um, or sorry, between in this polymer. And what it produces down here would be these two monomers. Okay, so hydrolysis is the process of turning polymers into monomers, okay, by breaking with water. Okay, and then this brings us to our last slide, which is uh, introducing the four major macromolecules in living things. Uh, they are lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and proteins. Wait, yes, I'm talking to you. Let me explain all the nutrients that are in that cheeseburger. Okay. That cheeseburger contains polymers, which are large molecules made up of smaller molecules called monomers. Think of this train car as a monomer. We can link monomers, even different kinds, together to form a long molecule. In this case, the train, which is a polymer. There are three polymers needed by the body, which are carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. The first polymer, carbohydrates, are made of small molecules called monosaccharides, which are simple sugars, such as glucose and fructose. These monosaccharides can be linked together to form polymers, such as sucrose or table sugar. Since only two are linked, it is called a disaccharide. Many monosaccharides can be put together, such as chains of glucoses forming starch found in plants. Since many were put together, it is called a polysaccharide. There are other polysaccharides. When glucoses are branched like this, it is called glycogen, which the body stores in the liver. Other glucose chains form cellulose in plants, also known as fiber, which humans cannot digest. Fiber is important to eat because it helps food move through the digestive system and can lower your cholesterol. The main function of all these carbohydrates is to provide the body with energy and to help make some cell parts too. The second polymer, lipids, also is used for energy, but in the long term. Lipids are made using fatty acids. If a fatty acid has all the hydrogens it can possibly fit, it is called saturated. These are solid fats like butter, which can raise your cholesterol. If the fatty acid has a double bond, it is called unsaturated. These are liquid fats like oil, and can even lower your cholesterol. When three fatty acids are linked to a glycerol molecule, it forms a triglyceride, the fat used for energy. If you eat too many of these, the body stores it as body fat, making you bigger around the middle. Two fatty acids added to a phosphate group form phospholipids that join together to make your cell membranes. Another lipid is cholesterol, naturally made by your liver. It is involved with cell membranes in making hormones like testosterone and estrogen. Too much, however, has negative health effects. The last polymer, proteins, build body structures like muscle and cell membranes and act as enzymes to speed up chemical reactions. Proteins are made from combinations of 20 amino acids, which all differ based on this side chain. The amino acids can be linked together using a peptide bond. Many amino acids linked together is called a polypeptide, which can be folded and added to other polypeptides to form complex proteins like hemoglobin, which carries oxygen in your blood. Proteins speed up reactions by acting as enzymes, which can help break molecules or help build them as seen here. That cheeseburger is filled with carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids. Chemical reactions during digestion break them apart into monosaccharides, fatty acids, and amino acids, which can be used by the body to build the carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins that it needs to function. The chemical reactions used to break the molecules, plus the ones used to build them, are collectively called your metabolism. Something to think about as you eat that burger. Thanks.